Well, there are just over 3,500 Muslims serving in the U.S. military out of a force of about 1.4 million. Groups like the Association of Patriotic Arab Americans in Military have been quick to point out that thousands of Arab Americans and American Muslims have, quote, willingly stepped forward to fulfill our duty with our fellow soldiers in both Afghanistan and Iraq, unquote. But some military leaders have expressed concerns that Muslim soldiers may experience a backlash as a result of the Fort Hood attack. We're bringing in our blogger bunch now to discuss this possibility. And while I chat with them, Reggie is keeping an eye on what you are saying. What are you saying, Reggie? Specifically looking at Anwar at Facebook and some of the comments that we're getting in here. And when I come back to you in a couple of minutes, I'll show you what they're saying. One of them, as a preview, is comparing what uh, could happen to Muslims in this country, particularly serving in the military, to what happened during World War II and the internment of Japanese Americans. Americans then. So we'll get to those comments in just a few minutes. Mm, very interesting comparison. All right, for now, let's introduce our bloggers. First up, we'd like to welcome Arsalan Iftikhar, who blogs at themuslimguy.com. Hello, Arsalan. Good afternoon, Emma. And we also want to welcome Melody Moisey, who you can find at melodymoisey.com. Hello to you, Melody. Hello. All right, so at this point in the investigation, we still know no certain motive for Major Hassan's attack. However, there have been reports by eyewitnesses that while he was allegedly going on this rampage, he shouted, God is great in Arabic. Uh, also, there have been suggestions that he posted online and he also stated during some presentations some support of suicide bombers. Also, that he may have attended the same mosque as two of the September 11th attackers. Arsalan, as you listen to some of these aspects of his faith being discussed in connection with the search for a motive, how do you feel? Well, first of all, like all Americans, you know, my, my heart broke into two pieces when I heard about the Fort Hood incident. And then, of course, my heart broke into another two pieces when I found out that it was a Muslim who had sadly perpetrated this act of mass murder. Uh, one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that, you know, just because someone might have said God is great uh, during an act of mass murder makes their act no more Islamic than if someone, you know, uttered the Hail Mary or sang onward Christian soldiers while bombing an abortion clinic or killing a medical provider. And so, you know, it, it, is, it is sad that it was an American Muslim who committed this heinous act of murder. And I think that the condemnation from people of all races and religions in America has, has been completely unequivocal. And Melody, how do you feel about this examination of Major Hassan's faith as we search for a motive? I think it's completely irrelevant. I agree with Aslan. I think you look at Muslim Americans, and for me in particular, this is a personal issue because my country was attacked and my faith was attacked. He is not representative of Muslims any more than the KKK is representative of Christians or the Bajrang Dal is representative of Hindus. He does not represent us, and I think the majority of Americans really do understand that. So when you say it's irrelevant, do you reject any potential connection between his Muslim faith and his acts, as in you can't see that he may have been motivated by ideology? Absolutely. I do not see any connection at all as a Muslim, as a woman, as an Iranian, as an American. There's no identity that I can look to that speaks to somebody being psychotic or somebody being completely deranged and a criminal. And I expect that there will not be the kind of discrimination that people are worried about. I don't think it's going to be like Japanese internment. Um, I think the American people are smarter than that. All right. Very interesting. Actually, yeah, yeah, you're leading us nicely there, Melody, into some comments that were made uh, by Army Chief of Staff George Casey, uh, warning over the weekend uh, that reaching conclusions about Hassan's motives before the investigation is complete could be dangerous. Let's listen to what he had to say. Frankly, I am worried, I'm not worried, but I'm concerned that this increased speculation could cause a backlash against some of our Muslim soldiers. And as great a tragedy as this was, it would be a shame if our diversity became a casualty as well. So, Arsalan, we have about 3,500 Muslims in the U.S. military. How do you see this potentially as impacting them? Well, you know, uh, official Pentagon estimates are about 3,400 American Muslims uh, in the uh, United States Army. Some act uh, government officials say that it could be more than 10,000 to 15,000. Uh, and so, you know, we have to remember that American Muslims and people of all races and religions have honorably and proudly served their country in the United States Armed Forces. 
that there should be no more of an indictment on American Muslims as if the crime was committed uh, by uh, an African American or a white American or in, like in Orlando, a, a Latino American. We certainly are not going to vilify all Latinos in the Orlando area because of a deranged killer. What I find uh, most interesting and, and saddening really is the fact that this man was a psychiatrist. He took the Hippocratic Oath to do no harm. He actually was counseling our soldiers on how to deal with you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, other anger management issues. I mean, he completely failed as a human being. He com completely failed in his profession. And murder is an irreligious act that has no religion whatsoever. All right, excellent. Let's continue that in just a moment. First off, let's uh, take a look at what you're saying online. Reggie, what are you seeing? Okay, so I was uh, telling you before about this comparison that one of our Facebook friends was making between what's, what's happening now and what has happened years ago to, to, to the Japanese during World War II. Mike says, worried about a backlash? How about that? Anyone remember the bad old days of World War II when Japanese people, American and Canadian citizens or not, were rounded up and, and interned? Anyone now understand their fear? Uh, next comment we're getting is coming from Allison, who says, There's a backlash. I experience it every day for stuff that other stupid people do, but two wrongs don't make a right. And all this focus on the killer is taking away the focus off those people that lost their lives. While everybody is worrying about being politically correct, people are dying. Stop judging people for what one person did. I'm going to end on this comment from Alex, who tells us, I think the incident might have some repercussions. The prejudice might rise against Muslim American soldiers after the attack. I agree a Muslim soldier should not have any advantages just because of his faith, but many people used to judge and criticize him for that. So again, uh, just a, a small sampling of what some of the folks are saying on Facebook today in Amor. Yeah, that's very interesting. We did hear from members of Hassan's family uh, saying that allegedly he was tormented uh, for his Muslim faith. Um, I, I want to bring this point to you, Melody, um, a point made by classmates of Major Hassan's uh, from a couple of years ago who said that they actually complained to superiors about what they saw uh, as his anti-American views. He had, for example, talked about supporting suicide bombings during a presentation. And uh, there was one of these classmates who wanted to remain anonymous uh, but who suggested that a fear of being seen as politically incorrect within the military was preventing a, quote, intellectually honest discussion of Islamic ideology. Do you think in any way that might help us understand how he fell through the cracks or not? I think Islam is not going to help us understand this because the Quran teaches that if you kill one person, you kill the world entire. And the Old Testament teaches that so many religions teach this. Again, the religion doesn't matter. This is anti-American activity, and that's exactly what it is. It's against Americans. It's not promoting Islam. It's not promoting anything beneficial to our society. And I think, yet again, that Americans realize this and can see that, you know, the, I'm an attorney and I can tell you that this is a violation. The government cannot discriminate against anybody based on their race, religion, national, national origin or sex and God willing, one day sexual orientation. Um, and they cannot, you know, and I think slowly we're seeing our courts really endorse that. And I think especially with Barack Obama in power and the fact that he was elected, Americans know what they're doing and they recognize that discrimination of any variety hurts all of us. Okay, so obviously discrimination problematic, but identifying anti-American sentiments that may lead to violent acts, um, problematic certainly in the eyes of Senator Joe Lieberman, who actually now wants Congress uh, to decide whether the shootings constitute a terrorist attack. Let's take a look at what he told Fox News over the weekend. In the U.S. Army, uh, this is not a matter of constitutional freedom of speech. If uh, Hassan was showing signs, saying to people that he had become an Islamist extremist, the U.S. Army has to have zero tolerance. He should have been gone. So what do you think, Arsalan, about that idea from Senator Lieberman about a preemptive strike, if you will, against somebody who's shown this kind of sentiment? Well, it's, uh, you know, as an attorney myself, it's, it has nothing to do with the preemptive strike. What it does have to do with is criminal probable cause. If there was criminal probable cause that this man, you know, might uh, commit an act of mass murder, then certainly he should have been reported to superiors and officials should have been investigating it. Now, you know, what I find ironic is that, you know, Senator Joe Lieberman sitting there with the Fox News backdrop, uh, you know, where they have been touting up the man's uh, religion and his ethnicity uh, uh, at every breath, 
you know, it, it really, you know, if you look, Joe Lieberman called it the worst act of terrorism since 9-11. Well, no, the Virginia Tech massacres in April 2007 actually killed more human beings. Now, we, wanna, we want this double standard to stop where if a brown Muslim person commits an act of murder, it's somehow called terrorism. But if a white guy or an Asian guy or a Latino guy or somebody who's not Muslim or Arab commits an act, it just happens to be a kook who does it, you know, and, and we have to understand that, you know, we're not going to let, you know, murderous knuckleheads like this Major Hassan you get away with that. We as Muslims, both 7 million and 1.57 billion Muslims worldwide, completely disavow, wash our hands of, of you know, criminals like Major Hassan. I wonder uh, what the two of you then think of the response by uh, several uh, groups that came out immediately after these attacks, several Muslim American groups, uh, like, for example, the Association of Patriotic Arab Americans in military, who said, and I quote, the actions of Hassan are those of a deranged gunman and are in no way representative of the wider Arab American or American Muslim community. Uh, now, Melody, how necessary do you feel it was for groups like that to speak out? Do they need to take some sort of responsibility to condone these attacks or to condemn these attacks I'm sorry right it's incredibly difficult to think that I live in a society where that's necessary it's unfortunate but the truth is that it is necessary for people to stand up because too many people have made the generalization that these people represent Muslims these terrorists or these criminals represent Muslims whenever somebody commits a crime we do not say what religion they are unless they are Muslim. And that, I think, is a huge problem inside of American society today. And well, I think and this is something we've seen with many minority groups where when you hear about somebody of your group doing something nefarious, you really wince, you feel that pain. Aslan, you were going to say. Yeah, well, you know, as someone who has been, you know, a prominent American Muslim civil rights lawyer since the day of 9-11, you know, we've seen a lot of anti-Muslim hate crimes and backlash. Uh, you know, after 9-11, after the Bali, Madrid, and London bombings, where, you know, people viewed Muslims not condemning terrorism enough. You know, unfortunately, people like myself and Melody have been, you know, st you know, shouting from the rooftops since September 11th. But for many people, sadly, you know, racism still exists in America. And so we've had drive-by shootings at mosques. We've had, you know, Muslim women who wear the hijab or headscarf who've been, you know, uh, beaten on the streets. And so these, you know, public condemnations are very important in the sense that it shows the rest of the American public that we Muslims are as part and parcel of the social fabric of America as anyone else. And that's very true, and that group in particular drawing attention to the thousands of Muslim Americans who serve in the military and uh, serve honorably. So I want to uh, say thank you very much to both of you for joining us this, uh, this discussion today. Uh, that's Arsalan Iftikhar, who you can read uh, more from at themuslimguide.com, and Melody Moisey, who you'll find at melodymoisey.com. Thanks very much. Thanks, Namor.